Example one, we'll do first uniform rod, uniform charge rod. And then let's say the charge is Q. And then the length is L. And then the distance here is D. And let's say there's another charge, point charge, little Q. And I want to find the force of the rod on the charge little Q. By the way, when I say that, I also mean I want to find the force of little q on the rod. It's the same thing. They would, they would both exert a force on each other. This guy is going to exert a force that way, and that guy is going to exert a force this way. So once we find the force of the rod on the little q, the little q will also exert a force on the rod. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take one little element, dq, on this side, and then another element equidistant on the other side, dq, and I'm going to say, what is the force of this dq on that, on that q? This guy exerts a force this way, right? Along the line joining them. This guy exerts a force on that guy that way, along the line joining them. df, df. Now, if this distance is x, and if this distance is also x, if they're equidistant, what do I know about the x component of df and the x component of the other df? The x component and the x component, actually the y component also. So since it's symmetrical, the x component are going to be equal and the y component are going to equal. The x components are going to cancel each other. Right? That's why the integration is doable. Because you have symmetry. This thing, df cosine theta, is going to cancel the df cosine theta. So the only thing that will survive is the y component, this guy and this guy. So df total is going to equal 2df the y comp times the y component. 2df y. Because the y component of df plus the y component of the other df, they will add up and it'll be twice because they're equal to each other. So now I make an angle, call it theta. Remember the, on, uh, last week I also defined an angle theta. Not necessarily because I wanted to know what theta was, but I was just going to use theta. I was going to use sine of theta or cosine theta, right? So this theta is the same thing as uh, this theta from the geometry of the situation. That data, that data is the same. So now I can say df total is uh, 2 df uh, sine theta. Because the cosine theta cancels each other, the x component. OK? So then the df is going to be k times dq times the charge of that, q, divided by the distance squared times sine of theta. So df is k dq q over distance squared, the Coulomb's law. And now r squared. That's the distance between them. Here's the point charge, right? Here's that. Here's x. Here's theta. Here's r. Here's d. The idea is to express the r in terms of the distance x, right? So r squared is going to be d squared plus x squared. Okay, times sine theta, and then sine of theta is d divided by r, which will be r is d squared plus x squared to the uh, one half power, right? 
So sine of theta is uh, d divided by d squared plus x squared to the 1 half power. In other words, I don't want to leave anything in the expression in terms of r. I want to have everything in terms of x. Because what I'm going to do then is integrate the thing. OK? Uh, so now I have an expression df total is 2k, take the q out of it, take the d out of the integral, keep the dq over d squared plus x squared to the 3 halves power, like that, 2kq times d, times dq over d squared, and then integrate this, that gives you the total force. Okay, so what's my limits of my integral? Zero to, or I could do, um, since I'm starting here at the mi middle, here's my x, y axis like this. Could go from zero to L over two, or I can go negative L over two to L over two, right? But since it's an even function, I should go from zero to L over two and double it, right? I could do that. 0 to L over 2 and I can double it because it's an even function. Can I go from uh, 0 to L? What if you forgot that the axis is at the center and you thought that the axis was right here? Then you would do the integral from 0 to L. Would it give you the right answer? Big mistake. Because in your setup, the x was measured from the center in order to express the r. How did you express the r? x squared plus d squared, right? So x was measured from here. If you're going to put the x, y axis here, then you have an element there, you have there. In other words, if my x is measured from here, and I have a certain element here, and this is my r, then my distance x is here. Right? So how would I express r then? So the distance from here to here will be l over 2 minus x. So this distance here will be L over 2 minus x. So my R will then be L over 2 minus x quantity squared plus d squared. Then I can do the integral from 0 to L. You see? So whenever you set up an integral, always be asking to yourself, where is my x and y axis defining from? You see? In this case, it makes more sense to do what I did there, to de define it from the center. Now, I purposefully told you one mistake here. See who caught it. Where's the mistake? You're right. I shouldn't multiply by 2. I should just go from 0 to L over 2. I shouldn't multiply by 2. Because when I was setting up the integral, I already put the 2. Right? I already p figured that there's symmetry going on. And then this and this, they add up. So I already accounted for the fact that half of the rod is going to give you the same answer as the other half of the rod. Right? So therefore, in that case, don't double it again, because you'll get twice the answer. OK, so just go 0 to L over 2. <clears throat> and uh, then do this. Now, there's one more step for us to do in order to be able to integrate this. I can't integrate this yet because this variable x and this is not the same thing. This needs to be dx in order to integrate it, uh, right? You can't have a q and x. So how can I relate the dq and make it into a dx? How can I somehow get dx out of that? <clears throat> 